I'm Anisha Gupta and we have seen a huge movement coming in in case of the commodity prices there. If you look at the gold prices, Jan started on a positive, Feb saw a sharp decline and then we have seen March prices trying to consolidate. The metal beaming in news this week clearly has been gold. We've seen all-time highs in India so far and this year itself and an anticipated 25 basis point of a repo rate hike by the Monetary Policy Committee and a decline in the US dollar index have clearly been supporting the yellow metal. This week, it particularly is crucial for gold as the RBI has launched the last tranche of sovereign gold bond scheme for FY23. The series is open from subscription from 6th to 10th of March. The issue price fixed at 5,611.11 rupees per gram of gold. And on the global front as well, the demand for gold has grown by 18% in the previous year by at around 4,742 tons, which has been the highest since 2011. And this is as per World Gold Council. So there clearly is so much happening in case of gold, whether it's about buying or the HUID. To talk all of that discussion forward, joining me now on the show is Chirag Mehta. He's Senior Fund Manager at Quantum AMC. Peter McQuire is CEO, Exim Australia, and PR Som Sundaram is Regional CEO, India at World Gold Council. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let's talk about the fundamentals itself, and we have started 2023 on a stronger note. And as I said, since those kind of levels, we've seen a huge amount of profit taking as well. Coming to you, first of all, Peter, what's your sense on the factors, fundamentals that you will watch from here on for gold? Well, Manisha, I think a couple of things I've got to keep a steady eye on. Certainly, US dollar index, we're conscious as far as Jay Powell's rhetoric and where we move this week. The inflation story hasn't seemed to, well, I don't think that's been put to bed at all. And how much further do central banks raise rates over the next quarter? And I feel as though that there's going to be a, a, a lot of volatility come across FX space. And I think that that's going to create uh, sizable moves across commodities and certainly the precious metals. All right. Well, yes, it's going to be about the U.S. Fed meeting, a meeting uh, in month of March as well, where 25 basis points is what the street really seems to be working with right now. But this one is to you, So, How are you looking at the markets? And uh, while, of course, uh, one thing that we keep talking about is uh, portfolio making, the other is the central bank buying, which quarter on quarter clearly seems to be supporting. Yeah, uh, Manisha, as you know, last year, central banks bought nearly 1,100 tons, highest ever. Uh, even in the gold standard, they hadn't bought so much gold. So uh, clearly, there is a, a relook at gold when it comes to portfolio, even at the central banking level. When it comes to the retail demand, last year was slightly lower than the previous year because previous year was aided by the lockdowns and people came out and bought loss in the fast, uh, fourth quarter that uh, last year did not have that benefit. But it was still 3% below when it comes to India. But globally, it was an 18% jump. Again, as I said, largely driven by Barson coins demand and uh, the uh, central bank demand. This year, I expect India to continue to buy gold, 800 to 850 tons, regardless of how the uh, prices move. And that is something which I think we should get used to. This year is going to be driven more by growth, the domestic growth, because we have seen growth aids demand in India. Prices do tend to affect immediate uh, buying decisions, but overall you will see 800 to 850 tons demand this year. All right, so 800 to 850 tons of demand this year as well as something that the Indian markets could be looking at. Chirag, this one is to you. So when uh, Som talks about the retail buying, which we didn't see much of in the previous year, at least in the global numbers, how have the Indian markets been really when you look at FY23 as a overall and uh, uh, what is your sense going forward because the gold prices are at a lucrative level. There is that conversation yet again about buying into gold because most markets believe that by this year end you could be looking at gold prices at a hefty level. Sure. Uh, looking at from a portfolio perspective, Anisha, uh, gold had some headwinds in the equity markets globally were, uh, at least the Indian markets were doing really well and therefore... Uh, uh, there was some demand pull from the equity markets from investments like gold. But I think invest, Indian investors are learning it the hard way and looking at gold as a must allocation. So we have seen increasing appetite from gold from that perspective. Uh, overall, it was a mixed uh, bag when it came to even investment flows. Uh, it was a bit tepid year last year. It was really, really mixed. 
uh, because there was heightened volatility at some point in time last year, which led to higher demand. And then as equity markets started recovering, uh, we saw some flows move back out of gold into equity markets. So overall, uh, fundamentally, we think that, you know, as prices are stabilizing at these kind of levels and the outlook looking a bit positive, given that, you know, much of the rate hikes are behind us, there could be some one or two more rate hikes from the U.S., and it could compel RBI to increase one more rate hike. But barring that, we have seen much of the pressure that uh, was building into gold and uh, through the higher dollar index was uh, much of it is behind us. So overall, we think that uh, as people become more constructive on the views, uh, we will see more uh, uh, increase in gold prices as well and more in demand per se. Uh, also to the fact that uh, overall gold demand will also increase because uh, there will be volatility in risk assets because if you see, look at the interest rates across the globe are at much higher levels than what we saw in the last two, three years, which leads to that impact on risk assets per se in a major way. And that volatility would also bring gold buyers into gold. So uh, overall, we're seeing a good positive year from a demand perspective. Also remember that uh, this is a pre-election year. And given that rural economy is not being doing well, if we have a good harvest and some support from the government, there could be increased demand from rural India as well. So overall, from a buying perspective, we are seeing more constructive outlook, given that uh, it could be all cylinders firing on, uh, be from an investment perspective or from an end consumer, given rural India consumes a lot of gold, we should see that demand come back in a major way. And what Soam says as a number, could be easily achievable uh, from, from that perspective. So overall, a very good constructive uh, demand outlook. And from uh, if prices are supportive, if prices remain steady and then increase over a point of time, hmm. I think we will see that buying come in in a major way. All right. Chirag, since you also look at ETFs, what has been the kind of buying within India? Uh, because we do understand December and Jan again were months of redemption. How has Feb been and what do you see as a pattern now? Yeah, so last three months, we had small outflows that into from gold ETFs in India. But uh, one uh, heartening fact is that, you know, overall, if you look at the number of investors in, in gold ETFs, they haven't declined or budged much. Okay. Uh, it is very, very constant. That tells you that maybe some few high ticket investors may have moved or shifted from gold to equities. The large portion of the gold investors who have come in last few years ours remain put when it comes to their gold investments. Mm. So overall, uh, we think that this is only increase as volatility in gold subsides and prices become constant or steady. Uh, we will see that uh, uh, the investors come in a big way. Also, when the uh, demand outlook becomes constructive or the price outlook becomes more constructive, that is when we will see more investors coming in. So at times of heightened volatility in equity markets, we have seen good buying in gold ETFs. And we think that even this year, it's going to be the same. As we see the impact of rate hikes on risk assets is where we see volatility and therefore uh, buying into gold ETFs will begin. Mm. Peter, what is your sense? I mean, as uh, Chirag mentioned out that uh, we you know, constantly see the money moving within asset classes, a lot from equities, and then we saw gold making all-time highs in the Indian markets, and then there has been some redemption with money moving yet again in case of equities. I mean, you look at equities and currencies and commodities as well. Globally, how do, have you seen the money move around? Well, I think, Manisha, it's been, if you're looking since, let's put our minds back to, say, October, We've seen a dramatic fall as far as US dollar index and you've seen equities have a nice bounce to the upside or continued movement and that Christmas period and then even into January. So February was um, a little bit sideways, but overall it was fairly positive. So it's been a really strong start to the year and also China re-engaged. So if, if you're looking at movement, I think fast money finds the best return at, the, at a specific time frame. And we've seen such dramatic moves from currency trading perspectives where you've seen yen move from 150 to 128 back to 135. There's just one example. This is euro, pound, Aussie. Have a look at what's happened as far as energy prices. So all of those involved markets or, or, the, or the way that they move, everyone's got involved in fast moving markets. And I think that's where the retail land has really found uh, significant profits really since October, November. Mm, well, absolutely. 
Fast money moves where you see profits and clearly gold has been quite volatile and we've seen fast moving money moving quite fast as well. But Som, this one is to you and there's just so much happening in the Indian markets as well. We have the sovereign gold bond uh, uh, being launched, another tranche yet again for this week where you also are looking at the festival week. And yes, people do go out and buy gifts and gold perhaps could be one of the reasons there. The other thing about is the HUID where a six digit number is now compulsory, mandatory rather, from 1st of April. How do you look at both of these uh, coming in in the month of March and April? So th how do you see the market moving with both of these? Well, first of all, uh, sovereign gold bond, I think we have had some success from the government's point of view. Over 100 tons, uh, I don't have the exact figures, have been issued. So it is an extremely uh, interesting uh, security. It gives you interest on your investment and upside on gold. I don't think there is any such uh, security anywhere in the world that does that. So, but the question always remains, has it really stopped fiscal buying or is it, is it attracting new forms of investors? Now that's for the economists to study, uh, but, but it, is, it is actually a very, very good uh, uh, security. And I'm sure it will be fully subscribed and there's no uh, issues at all about that. Hmm. Uh, coming back to HUID, I think HUID, as you know, Manisha, has been uh, there for the last uh, uh, two years, I think. It was just that it was not at the jeweler level. Jewelers were also allowed to sell old hallmarked jewelry, which did not have HUID. All that the change now has happened is that they can't sell the old inventories because two years' time, is, uh, the government feels is sufficient to have sold your old stocks. So all that you will see from April 1st is that the existing HUID system applies to all of gold sold through the jewelry outlets. There is, no, there is going to be no parallel stream of saying I have old inventories which I have to sell mm. without HUID. This is going to be definitely a very interesting thing to see because sections of the trade were not very happy with HUID. Uh, so we have to see how this actually rolls out in, in reality. But from the consumer point of view, I would think this is an extremely positive step because now you have a six digit number. You can go into the uh, website and really check the entire history of that piece of jewelry. I think it's not there anywhere else in the world. This is, again, somewhere where India is leading with technology. And I think that trade should support it. It's not just for India. I think we should actually roll it out to other countries as well. Mm. There's one form of leadership in gold that India can show. Oh, well, absolutely. When it comes to transparency, credibility, ensuring that you're getting the same purity and weightage that you are paying for and a number, a unique code number on every piece of jewellery, it's something that we have seen India buy now get in through. And as said, from 1st of April, there would be only one uh, form of selling it. That would be the new HUID, which is a six-digit alphanumeric number, a unique code that would be put on each piece of jewellery there. So clearly, a lot of changes happening there in the market there. But with that, let's stop for a short break. When we talk back... We'll talk about uh, the weather concerns, also talk about China, economic data, dollar, on what really are the factors to watch out for as we move ahead into the year, especially in case of the US dollar and the gold there. The discussion continues when we return.